Hi there. Well, today we're going to talk about the top 10 things to think about when you're considering security cameras. So number one on my list is price versus quality. So there are all sorts of cameras out there on the marketplace now, from really, really cheap stuff on Amazon and AliExpress, right through to professional quality products that could cost you thousands of dollars. Now, today what I'm gonna focus on is the Reolink brand, because I think this brand sits somewhere between the middle of these two options. It's offering good quality and affordable price so that you can get the best of both worlds. Number two on the list would have to be wired versus wireless. Now, I would always go wired if possible. The reasons being you have permanent power, so you never have to worry about batteries running out. And secondly, you've got a permanent connection to your camera. So there's no issues with wireless um, interference or problems with your wireless network. Power over ethernet cameras are really great because they offer one wire to carry both the power and the signal for the camera. Point number three is about battery cameras. So if there's no way that you can get a power or an ethernet cable to your camera, then it's really worth having a close look at battery cameras. The first thing to consider is how many milliamp hours the battery that's running that camera has. So for example, the Argus PT Ultra has a 20,000 milliamp hour battery that can last up to seven days with a 12 hour recording each day. Adding a solar panel onto battery powered cameras is a really good idea. When considering the positioning of your solar panels, always ensure that they're gonna get enough light to keep the battery charged. Point number four is storage. Now storage can be done either locally or in the cloud. In the cloud offers you the benefits of being available even if for example, worst case, your house had to burn down. However, for most cases, local recording is a really good option as there's no additional monthly charges. Now when it comes to local recording, you have a couple of options. First one is to use an SD card within the camera, which will record a certain amount and then when it reaches its end, it will write over. Generally in this case, it would only record each time it spots a movement, not 24 seven. The next option is to have a hub inside the home, which would connect to all the cameras and store on local cards within the hub. The final option is an NVR. This is a device that has one or multiple hard drives and will record all the footage from your cameras 24 seven. Point number five is night vision. Now traditionally this was done in two ways, either with a spotlight or with infrared lighting. Infrared means that you don't have a visible light, but you only see in black and white. Or otherwise you can have a spotlight where basically when the camera detects motion, turns on the spotlight and gives you vision. The latest technology in cameras is called color night vision. And this is where the cameras have a very low light function where they're able to show color footage with virtually no light. Point number six would be resolution. So really important if you're looking for high definition images to go for the highest possible resolution that you can afford. So cameras today can even be down right down to 720p or 1080p, but I would suggest you need to be looking at least at 2K, if not 4K. Latest cameras are even coming out with 8K now. Point seven is PTZ versus fixed. So pan, tilt, zoom means that you can move the camera around as well as zooming in. Now this is all good and well if you're actually watching the camera at the time that you wanna see something. But if you're looking at footage that you've recorded, you've got no real way of panning and tilting. You may have some zoom, but certainly not optical zoom. So the other option is to go with really wide angle cameras. And some of the new cameras in the Reolink range now offer the dual cameras where they can cover an extremely wide angle of field or field of view. Point number eight is viewing of your footage. So there's a number of ways that you can do this now. Traditionally, people would have had a display monitor with all the cameras showing on the display and they could perhaps go through the footage on an NVR and view it. But nowadays, most of our cameras are accessible to the internet, which enables you to access the footage on your smart home or an iPad or whatever device you want. 
Point number nine is smart home integration. And this is one of the things that Reolink is very powerful at. They've created a very close integration into Home Assistant. This means that you can actually pull in information from the Reolink system, such as alerts and also actual footage from the devices themselves, so that you can very easily utilize this information within your home automation system. Point number 10 is AI integration. And this is really exciting because I think this is really the future of smart home and cameras because what it can do now is actually start analyzing the data that the camera is reading. For example, with Reolink cameras, you have access to pet, human, and vehicle detection. So you can actually trigger alerts based off any of those three different type of events. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you've really enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe, and the links to all of this information on the Reolink site will be in the description below. That's all for now. Bye then.